All right, everyone. Um, welcome to our topic. I'm very excited to be here in the Fast Asia Summit, sharing our topic, Introduction to Open User Embedded and its Innovative Features. Um, my name is Yong Mao. Now I am the committer of the Open Euler MCS repository, responsible for developing the Mika framework and auditing codes for developers when they upload their codes to our repository. Okay, in the following half an hour, I would like to introduce two main topics. The first one is introduction to Open Euler Embedded, including its key features, its um, general architectures, and its um, application scenarios. Then I would like to introduce the mixed criticality system framework and its a management framework for supporting multi-OS running on a single embedded OS platform. Okay, um, so firstly, thanks to Dr. Shong's presentation about Open Euler, now we may have a better understanding of what Open Euler is. This. As we know, Open Euler covers four main scenarios, that is server, cloud, edge, and embedded. And Open Euler Embedded focuses on providing competitive operating te uh, system technology for hardware resor uh, for resource limited hardware platform. And because of the need to build customized OS, we choose Yocto as our composing system. So it's a open source project from Linux Foundation, and it's provide an easy way to um, tailor our operating system. Okay, so after knowing the relationship between Open Euler Embedded and Open Euler, now I, want, I would like to provide a definition of what it really is. So we define it as an open and comprehensive embedded software platform. So it's not just the embedded Linux, but it's like a solar system. The sum is the embedded Linux. It provides the unified build, rich features, ecosystems, and standardized interface. And we also have some non-Linux planets which provide rich features, like T can provide security, RTOS can provide hard real time, and bare metal can provide extreme performance, while the embedded virtualization can provide isolation and resource management. Okay, so let's take a deeper look to open your embedded. So the um, the blue part are the scope of open your embedded. So for the hardware, we can support more diversified hardware than the cloud and server scenario. And for the application, we mainly support operational technology applications. And, and we would like to attract um, users and vendors to um, build your own application based on Open Euler uh, uh, based on Open Euler Embedded to um, you know, provide more interesting features. And at the bottom part, we have the Fusion Doc, which is a collection of, of technologies to support multi-OS running, so including virtualizations, containers, etc. And above that, we have the Mika framework, um, which is the management framework for uh, lifecycle management for multi-OS. And we can also provide a communication framework for um, different OS communication. And above the Mika framework, we have various types of OS. Um, for Linux kernel, we have configuration and optimization for different scenarios. And above Linux, we have many different kinds of interesting features. And the RTOS, we don't have a best for all option for it. So we supported um, you know, different kinds of RTOS. So firstly, the Uniproton, which is, is a very interesting RTOS, also from Open Euler community. And we have Zephyr, which is a well-known operating system worldwide, and Artist Red, and very popular uh, RTOS in China. And also, reliability is our focus. So uh, we would like to pro uh, provide the performance tuning, debugging, and chasing methods. For example, the Mika framework have provide a debugging methods for RTOS who has realized the GDB stop. And also, the tools and infrastructure are also very important because uh, they are the backbone of our system and they are supporting our daily work. Okay, so let's um, also, 
Let's move down a little bit to see the key features of our system. We have one plus X plus one feature. The first two um, features are the invariants, which is the you know the two legs to support our operating system. That is the embedded Linux and the infrastructure with the X features in the middle. And for the embedded Linux, we have um, high quality maintained kernel, uh, which is the same kernel as other kinds of distributions of open user. And above that, we will do specific optimizations and um, configurations, like we will apply prim RT patch for soft real-time applications, and we will do fine-grained configurations and tuning to reduce binary size and memory consumption. As for the infra uh, infrastructure, we choose Compass AI as the uh, foundation technologies for our CI/CD system, and we choose Yocto as our building framework, as, as I said before. And we store all uh, of our codes in Gitty, which is something like GitHub, but uh, a more popular one in China. In the middle, um, we have the DSoft bus, which is a kind of you know a collection of technologies to manage and connect different node devices in a local network. And we have our mixed criticality system. Um, so it provides the foundation technologies like hypervisors and containers, and we provide a management framework above it. And we also support embedded robot runtime, like we integrate ROS2 into our system. And we also have the embedded, you know, we also want to provide um, more support for embedded edge and, and embedded AI in the future. So like we will integrate Cube Edge K3S into our system so that in the future, um, we will improve the collaboration between the cloud edge and you know embedded. And also we will integrate mainstream AI framework in the future, like the TensorFlow, PyTorch, or MindSpore. Okay, so after knowing the key features, now you may be wondering like, um, so what's the, what does it look like when the open user embedded is running? So actually we have four running modes. The first one is the very typical mode. So that is we only run one Linux based on the embedded system. So um, now we can you know, uh, get the advantage of Linux ecosystems, but the cons are very obvious. Uh, there's no guarantee of hard real time or high reliability, which are the advantage of our tasks. As a result, in the following three modes, um, we can run more than one OS based on a single embedded platform. Um, for the AMP mode or the asymmetric multi processing mode, um, we deploy open user embedded and RTOS based on different types of CPUs. Like for example, we deploy open user embedded on A tire uh, ARM core cluster and we deploy RTOS on M tire ARM core. And the static, so the hardware resource is static allocated. So the disadvantage is the number of OS is limited by the hardware resources. Like if we only have four CPUs in the embedded system, then we cannot run five OS based on it. To resolve this problem, we introduce the virtualization mode, which can you know provide, which use the virtualization technology to provide, in theory, um, unlimited operating system um, to you know, pr provide the um, chance to run unlimited operating system um, based on a resource limited hardware platform. However, um, because we have poor support for heterogeneous cores, so um, hypervisor can only run on homogeneous cores cluster. As a result, in the end, we have diffusion mode. So we will run AMP mode for heterogeneous cores, and we will run a um, virtualization mode for homogeneous cores. 
All right. Um, so actually, we can deploy our operating system as three different kinds of system. So firstly, we can deploy it as a server so that it can control different kinds of node devices through internet. And we can also deploy it as an edge-based system to, for edge computing. And we can also deploy it as just, you know, as it or, or, originally designed for, for, for the embedded system. And it can control different kinds of peri peripherals. OK, so I want to make a small summary for our ecosystem. Open Uter Embedded is an open and comprehensive software platform. It includes the embedded Linux part, which gains the kernel from Open Uter community, the same kernel as the other kind of distribution. And we use Yocto as our building system, which is different from other distribution. And we also have some non-Linux parts, like RTOS and Hypervisor. Um, for the applications, we support industrial IoT, robotics applications, energy industries, and BMC, which stands for Baseboard Management Controller. And we have some applications for it, like um, we have applied our operating system into the industry controller, the unmanned vehicles, um, and some interesting robots. Like um, last year in the Open Uter Summit, there is a very interesting robot um, if you stand in front of the camera, the painting robot can paint a picture for you. So it's also run the Open Uter Embedded inside it. All right, so um, I would like to introduce um, the development board. So Uter Pi is a series of development boards um, designed for running Open Uter Embedded. And High Uter Pi is one of it. And um, its SOC is SD3403 designed by High Silicon, so we name it High Europi. It has very powerful hardware and can run complex software based on it. And its usage is mainly for industrial control and robotic applications. It can support you know, various types of communication protocols and peripherals. OK, so secondly, I would like to introduce our mixed criticality system framework. So at first, I would like to make a small metaphor to help you understand what is mixed criticality system. So in the past, like we, we only have small flower pots. In each flower pot, we can only plant one single type of flower with very limited quantity. But, but with the time flies, um, we have more mature you know, pot making technologies. And nowadays, we have very big flower pots. Uh, in each flower pot, we can plant various types of flowers. And also, each type of flower are isolated. Um, for example, if one bunch of flower dies, it will not affect other, other bunch of flowers. OK, let's move back to the field of computer science. In the past, we only have very, uh, very simple hardwares, like the tiny MCU. So we can only run um, something like bare metal applications or um, small RTOS based on it. And nowadays, we have very complicated SOCs with multi-cores, even heterogeneous cores, so that we can run more than one OS based on the SOC. So like we can run Linux plus RTOS plus other kind of bare metal applications. But um, to ensure the safety, we need to provide an isolation mechanism so that um, if one OS dies, it will not affect other OS running. OK, so maybe um, now you have a general understanding of what MCS is. So now I would like to provide a more clear, more strict definition. So as it, its name says, MCS stands for Mixed Criticality System. So uh, literally, it just stands for a system with mixed criticality components. So, so what does criticality stand for? It mainly refers to safety, but it can also extend to other notions like um, real time, security powers, etc. And we, we mainly um, you know, focus on three parts of MCS, that is the deployment, quarantine, and scheduling. So firstly, you know, we need to deploy different kinds of OS onto 
the platform so that we now have the mixed criticality. But that is that is not enough because um, to ensure safety, we need to provide quarantine between different OS. And then to achieve a better overall performance, we need to in implement scheduling so that, um, you know, like the virtualization, if one OS is in idle state, it, it can, you know, allocate resource for other kinds uh, of OS to achieve a better overall performance. And we believe it's the future trend of embedded systems because of two reasons. Um, from the server side, um, the hardware is evolving from distributed one to centralized one. Like for example, the ECU in automotive vehicles in the they can only do very simple tasks. But nowadays, um, they are evolving into a zone controller to control a large area of you know, hardwares. So um, we need a more um, complex software to do the control. And from the client side, we are having more and more complex node devices like the drones nowadays. Um, they should keep balance at the same time while taking photos and transmit the data back to the cloud. They are doing many complex things at the same time. So we may need you know, more than one OS for the different applications. All right, um, so I'd like to introduce our mixed criticality deployment framework. Um, why we call it deployment framework is because um, for the quarantine and scheduling mechanism, they are implemented by the foundation technologies like virtualizations and containers, um, which is included in the Fusion Doc part. And our Mika framework mainly focused on four parts. That is the lifecycle management, cross OS communication, service framework, and multi OS build infrastructure. So for the lifecycle management, we provide a unified interface for multi OS management so that we can hide the differences of the foundation technologies in FusionDoc. As for the cross OS communication, we provide a shared memory based and lockless framework to support efficient communication. As for the service framework, we define the service interface as different OS provide different services. And in the end, we also provide a unified resource description so that you know, um, different OS can dock into our Mika framework more easily in a more standard way. Okay, so we can take a deeper look into our framework. So for the lifecycle management framework, actually because it needs to um, control the hardware. So actually it's a you know, platform independent framework. We will take RMVA architecture as an example. Um, so firstly, if the Mika framework want to put up the remote processor, it, sh it will send an SMC call to the bottom level firmware, and the bottom level firmware will you know, do the actual work to put up the CPU of the remote um, operating system. And for our framework, we mainly use the remote proc framework as our you know, base technology for, um, for do, doing most part of the lifecycle management. So remote proc framework is a framework um, in Linux kernel um, and it provides the, um, a standard way to abstract the remote operating systems. Like, so like in the framework, the remote operating system, each, each the remote operating system is a remote proc instance. So in our Mika framework, we have um, many remote proc instance. And below the, the remote proc instance, we have a unified resource manager to manage all kinds of resources in our Mika framework. And above each remote proc instance, we will call the interfaces of remote proc to load our you know, OS binary to the uh, destination memory and parse the resource table and boot up Etc. You know, doing a lot of things, and for the resource table, um, so it's a very, very interesting and very special data structure in ERF format. 
Um, each entry of the resource table indicates a type of a resource for, you know, between the two OS as there is a shared resource. Okay, as for our service framework, um, for now, we mainly depend on the RP message framework from kernel as well. Um, and if we have one service between the two OS, then, then it will establish one specific endpoint for it. But you know, for the abstra abstraction, um, the service is another kind of abstraction other than the endpoint. So it's a more abstract notion. Um, for example, we can have pseudo terminal service that is the PTY service. Um, but for the two OS, they may have more than one PTY connection. As a result, for a single service, we may have more than one endpoint um, you know, mapped to it. And also, we can provide self-defined um, service like the debugging for our task with GDB stop. Uh, and the bottom level is not implemented with RP message framework. We are Im implemented with our own defined data structure. All right. Um, so then I would like to introduce the history and the future of the Mika framework. So in the past, we only implement the OpenAMP-based Mika framework so that we can only support uh, many deployment, but poor quarantine and scheduling. And now we are developing with many, you know, excellent virtualization technologies like the VMs, like Rust drivers, and we also want to use the lightweight containers to, you know, to enrich our ecosystem. And as a result, in the future, we want to support both heterogeneous and multi, sorry, uh, both heterogeneous and homogeneous cores. Um, and support even you know the collaboration between the node device and the the cloud um, systems. Okay, so I would like to show our envision of the future framework. Um, so firstly, we will deploy many OS based on the you know the homogeneous core cluster um, with a type one hypervisor. Um, because it's the type one hypervisor, even though different virtual machines are isolated, they actually have a management VM for management the whole hypervisor system, sorry, the virtualization system. And um, because the management VM is responsible for um, Take, take control of the communication in and out the system. So like if the two VMs want to send interrupts to each other, they need to pass through the management VM. But to improve the efficiency of data transmitting, um, the two VM can you know directly establish in their data transmission uh, channel. And secondly, we can also deploy our operating system to heterogeneous cores. Uh, and the communication can happen in the physical memory. Of the physical layer, we have the vert IO protocol as the linked layer protocol. And above that, um, you know, except for RP message protocol, which is a kind of transport layer protocol, we also want to support other protocols like UDP and TCP. And above that, we, we also want to ex establish our own RPC framework, that is the remote procedure call, call framework. And thirdly, um, we also want to modify the Isula so that uh, Isula is a kind of lightweight container technology, which is something like Docker, but it's from the open user community. And we want to modify Isula uh, so that um, Users can deploy operating system through K3S, through Isula to the Mika framework, to here or here, to the embedded device. <clears throat> All right. So at last, 
um, welcome to in engage in our open, Euro open Euro community. And these are the resources for you. Okay, thank you for listening.